Sounds good. And um, that's apparently the excuse for why he's not doing interviews. And of course, he's not doing the CNN town hall. Um, he refuses to do another debate. And, you know, look, being president of the United States is probably one of the hardest jobs in the world. And so we really do need to ask if he's exhausted being on the campaign trail. Um, is he fit to do the job? And I think that's a question that is an open-ended question that he needs to answer. Thank you all. There's a lot of, sure. You're in a state where there's a lot of opposition to you from pro-Palestinian voters. Um, in light of the recent news uh, this week in the Middle East, I mean, does your message to them change? What's your message to them in the final few weeks? Well, my message remains, first of all, we have got to end this war. And I think that what has happened now with the, the killing of Sinwar um, creates an opportunity for us to end this war and bring the hostages home. And I think everyone wants this war to end. And this is an opportunity to actually get there. Okay. Madam Vice President, can you explain why sort of the race still remains incredibly tight and you've been out campaigning? What's your sort of like thesis of the case for why it remains so tight? Look, it's, it's, it's an election for President of the United States. It's not supposed to be a cakewalk for anyone. There are very important issues at play. And I am clear, and I think the people that you hear right now in the background are clear, that Donald Trump is unfit for the office. He is unstable. And he, frankly, is a danger to our democracy, as has been described by his former chief of staff, secretaries of defense, national security advisor, and former vice president. Yeah, Caitlin, go ahead. President, former president, president yeah. uh, has been critical of you not attending the announcement dinner last night. As you were talking about him being exhausted, do you think that that's one reason why he chose to live in New York City rather than come out here on the Camden Trail? Well, I'm beyond getting into the head of Donald Trump, but I will say that it should be a concern if he can't handle the rigors of the campaign trail. Is he fit to do the job? I think it's a legitimate question. Lincoln was probably a great president, although I've always said, why wasn't that settled? You know, I'm a guy that it doesn't make sense. We had a civil war. Well, half the country uh, left horrible. before he got there. Yeah, yeah. But you'd almost say, like, why wasn't that? As an example, you... Uh, I think it's a legit question. Can the former president of the United States of America handle the pace? The pace of running for the highest office, possibly in the world, actually, because he appears to be showing signs of being tired, exhausted, and question. What is this? I'm being totally serious. It's not wrong answers only. We've done some, like... Well, Google have this thing where you can check a picture. Yeah, and this is what it comes up with. Uh, does anybody know exactly what was going on? He was on Fox and Friends or Fiends or whatever today, uh, Friday. But something isn't right. Something clearly has detached within the uh, environment that Trump resides in. Now they're ramping up their rhetoric. And when she sat down with Brett Baer, she said, talking about you, he's unstable. When she uh, was speaking at a rally in Erie, Pennsylvania, she called you unstable and unhinged. And then in this new ad that they've rolled out, she's saying unhinged, more unstable and unchecked. And then this caller that called into Charlemagne the God, his breakfast club show, um, this caller says, I have a sneaking suspicion that if Trump wins, he's going to use this law to put anyone that doesn't look white in camps. And I'm scared. And she says, yeah. So... You've hit on a really important point. What is your response and what is your closing argument? Well, first of all, the question is a pretty rough question because, uh, you know, you're giving this whole argument of this woman that I don't think she knows where she is. Uh, she's a low IQ person. She's not smart. Everyone knows that. Uh, didn't even pass her law exam. It was a big thing. She never thought she was going to be able to pass it. Uh, you know, if you tell me this stuff, I'll say it. Uh, I am a, a person that they are a threat to democracy. These people are misinformation people. They'll say, let's go out with this one. They've tried many different things. Uh, they tried, he's a dictator. He's going to take over the whole world. He's a this. It, every week they try something else. So far it hasn't worked. I guess that's the attack they have for this week. It doesn't seem to be working. Uh, I am the most stable human being. Remember they said uh, a stable genius. I am the most stable <laughs> human being. I've been doing this for a long time. We had four years of greatness. We had the greatest economy in history. We had the greatest border. Brian, you were down there. Absolutely. We had a border that was the best we've ever had in the history of our country. There's never been anything like it. I built 551 miles of wall, which is far more than I said I was going to build when I right. campaigned. 
I had a border where the drugs were at the lowest level, the human traffickers in women. They traffic in women. Everything was at the lowest level. I got kudos from, excuse me, the, the Border Patrol gave me, with thousands of people, unanimous, every single one. They endorsed one. you, yeah, Mr. President. Yeah. They endorsed me. And, what and, can you do better than that? And, Mr. President, you're, you're gaining with minorities. And you uh, VP Kamala Harris has touched on this, but uh, what I do not understand, uh, President Biden was under so much scrutiny, left, right and center over his health. Uh, we can't even get a medical report. Nothing. We could see what we saw. I mean, I saw he went to a barber's the other day and he had stanky leg, his leg, one leg is following behind the other. Now, fair enough, that may be a complaint from his, what's that, his bone spur or whatever. There may be something I don't know about or you don't know about. But being serious, he looks tired, he looks worn out, he looks exhausted, and he hasn't really stretched himself. I mean, appearing on Fox News, and uh, what is it, he's done a couple of podcasts, not really done anywhere. I would love to see him go on MSNBC, yeah, against Ari Malber or Joy Reid. Really push himself, because he's not done that. He did CNN a while back, but still not really pushed himself. But he's been allowed to get away with it. Because it's a bit like uh, when you get a traffic ticket, you get a traffic ticket. Some people think they don't need to pay it. They think they're above it. Uh, Trump clearly feels and thinks he's above the law. We'll see how it goes, yeah? But thoughts, do you think Trump is fit or... Well, F-U-C-K-E-D. This is Mark Anthony. Even though some have forgotten, I remember what it was like when Trump was president. I remember what he did and he said about Puerto Rico, about our people. Puerto Rico. I remember after Hurricane Maria devastated our island, Trump blocked billions in relief while thousands died. I remember when our families lacked clean water and electricity, Trump threw paper towels and called Puerto Rico dirty and poor. I was not surprised because I also remember that he launched his campaign by calling Latinos criminals and rapists. He told us what he'll do. He'll separate children from their families and threaten to use the army to do it. This election goes way beyond political parties. Let's remember what the United States represents and stands for. United, regardless of where we're from. I am Mark Anthony and I remember. That's why I support Kamala Harris for president. I'm Kamala Harris and I approve this message.